You're listening to DraftKings Network. Feeling good about your fantasy draft picks but not sure what to eat? Make it easy on yourself. Order in on DoorDash. Now you can root for your squad while your food and drinks are on the way. Yeah, that means burgers, chips, dips, soda, pizzas, wings, and so much more delivered straight to your door. God bless football, Billy Gill. God bless football, Stu Gats. You left out Mikey A. That, yeah, uh, did. You, did, you did it on purpose, <laughs> didn't you? You did it on purpose. You're angry this morning and you're taking it out on me. I'm yeah. not angry. God bless just, football, Stu Gats and Billy Gill. Yeah, Thank I'm you, not Mikey angry. A. I just, I told you before, I'm not feeling great today. Yeah. It's been, you know, occurrences have happened. So I just, it slipped my mind. I'm sorry, Mikey. Do you uh, care to uh, share one of those occurrences with us or what do you think? Huh? I have a headache. I feel like yeah. I need to, you know, I need to throw up a little bit. Right. I was talking about the clogging of the toilet. Well, that happened too. <laughs> but in fairness, like I did my part. Like I went and I asked if there was a, I was here at work. I asked, is there a plunger? I checked both bathrooms, and then I was told we don't have a plunger. So, like, I don't know what more I can do. Wait, so you made Boy. the you made the walk of shame out of the bathroom. You have clogged the toilet here in our offices, in our paper. studios. It was paper. Okay, but you made the walk of shame and asked somebody if we have a plunger? Correct, I did. Yeah. Interesting. That's embarrassing. It's a rough way to start Monday. I yeah. felt like I owned it, though. Like, I like okay, here's how we can do this, and I know the way this office works, mm-hmm. right? Yep. So I could pretend that nothing happened and walk away because there was like two people in the office at the time because it was really early. Yeah. Right. Yep. And mm-hmm. I could just walk away. Mm-hmm. Then, early afternoon, of course. Then there, right. yeah. Then there will be some sort of investigation, and then they'll start going through cameras. Then right. Be like a whole thing, mm-hmm. and then they'll try to shame me for being a human being and having to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so I said, like, whatever. I'll just go and I'll ask and I'll resolve the situation because. What's going to happen, again, knowing this place, is that people are just going to continue to use that toilet. And then someone is going to be the person that flushes it, and it's going to overflow. Yep. And then it's going to become an entire thing. So there's two things on this. One, I think you know the next time this happens, uh, I think what you need to do is say, hey, I mean, I have no idea. Someone must have used the bathroom over the weekend. Well, then they'll ask me, why were you in That's... the bathroom for 20 minutes on a toilet that was used? Over you the were looking trying... for a plunger. Yeah, looking for a plunger. Exactly, Mikey. And then the plunger, plunger itself is a very tricky and dangerous game. I don't know about you, but when my toilet is clogged, I just shove the plunger in there and hope for the best. I mean, that's about it. No. What I, else can you do? I know how to plunge. <laughs> do you? I could plunge like the best of them. There's a science and a strategy to plunging? Mm-hmm. Really? Yep. I learned, okay. I learned recently there's two separate plungers. Really? The shallow one is for the sink. Huh. The big one's yes. for the toilet. Yeah. I had no idea. Me neither. I was always using the same Don't one. Don't mix those up. Yeah. You were like, using the same plunger? Yeah, I was like, these things are universal. You know, no big That's deal. That's gross. Yeah. You no. can't use a plunger that you've used in the toilet in the sink. Semantics. <laughs> what do you mean semantics? Why do you need to use a plunger in the sink? One plunger to plunge them all. Uh, well, why would you need to plunge the sink? The sink gets clogged. No, your sink gets clogged. No, you use uh. a snake. I snake the toilet. <laughs> no, there's no snaking this situation. You snake, you snake a bathtub and you snake a sink. What are you plunging? What did you put down the sink? Listen, man, they make the plunger for the sink. What am I going to tell you? I've never seen there, a like... shallow plunger for the sink. Yeah, Google look it. into this. I look at sink, I see put the sink one, plunger. You know, yeah. orange. I just, yeah, I just grab whatever plunger I can find. I shove it into the toilet Thank and you. hope for the best. Yeah, just start with the That's suction. It. Just get yeah. it out of there. Yeah. Anyway, we have a Super Bowl. Yeah. Very exciting. We have two weeks to talk about it. I know we do, uh, but we do have to talk about yesterday's games. Uh, Mikey A has his first ever top five. Wow. My ter- my first top five. I'm excited. What, what I'm excited. inspired? I thought Fuentes was going to do one, too. Well, he didn't. Uh, what inspired? Because his, his have been awful the last couple of weeks. So oh, we uh, Last week was amazing. <laughs> what was it again? I don't even remember. Yeah, exactly. It was so great. You can't top remember. Top five things. <laughs> yeah. Top five things. Top five things. Top five that. Top five this. Yeah. Hold on. Let me clarify something. When What sink are you doing? The bathroom sink or the kitchen sink? Kitchen sink. Kitchen, probably. Oh, that's even grosser. You use the toilet plunger yeah. in the kitchen sink where your dishes are? Yeah, because I put it in there and I never no. touch a sink again. Right? I don't clean it at all. Hmm. Right. You don't. Please. You go and you clean the, the sink <laughs> afterwards. Yeah. I don't believe you. House of bleach. 
that place stinks. Not, no. No, you don't. You do I'm with Billy on this. <laughs> I mean, do you have a garbage disposal? No. Oh, okay. Well, that explains that. Oh. that. Now it's making sense. I thought you were talking about the bathroom sink. I'm like, what are you sticking down the bathroom sink? There's a toilet right no. there. So the Lions spent the entire season. Great what's, not a, at, what's the craziest thing you've thrown great out the toilet? Too. Thanks. What's the craziest thing you've thrown <laughs> down the toilet? Uh, the craziest thing I've thrown into a toilet? Yeah, to flush. You're like, ah, mm. flush this. Be careful. I'm trying to think. Yeah. Wow. Cops are knocking. Yeah. <laughs> Mikey got it. <laughs> How about you, Billy? <laughs> we well, we used to have a lot of fish. I would flush fish down down the toilet. Dead fish. Really? Yeah, that's where. Well, yeah. I would hope they're dead. I yeah, mean. no, I didn't do a live fish. Right. Actually, you don't want Pete to call him, Billy. Don't, <laughs> Billy. Be careful. This is a dangerous game, man. <laughs> we did have a murderer fish. Really? Yeah. There was yeah. a time that we had a fish tank. And we got these like little neon fish that would swim around and we had like a black light. It was like really cool. And then almost every day we would come home and like one of them would be floating around and we couldn't figure out what was going on. And then eventually we identified the fish that was killing all of the other fish. Right. And I, I believe that that fish um, got a death sentence. If mm. I remember correctly, I think the fish mm. was... Uh, Faced a fair trial, but was found guilty <laughs> of killing, I believe, eleven fish at the time, and right. then had to, you know, so you had to face it. the consequences. Yeah. I, I'm not gonna listen. And it was also like at a strange. Here's like really weird. It was at the same time that uh, Johnny Versace had been murdered, right. and Andrew Cunanan was on the lam, mm -hmm. and they were mm -hmm. trying to find the person that murdered Johnny Versace. Right. So we named this fish Cunanan. Because he was a murderer. Got it. Yeah. And then flushed it down the toilet. Well. Yeah. I'm just going to say, there is a fair trial. Mm -hmm. And our fish faced the consequences for his actions of murdering 11 other fish. Interesting. Is it? No. Oh. Dan Campbell flushed down the Lions uh, season down the toilet yesterday. How about that for a transition, Mike Fuentes? Huh? <laughs> I mean, the Lions spent the entire, almost an entire season not acting like the Lions, right up until they acted like the Lions. Well, but they acted the way that they acted all season long. Yeah, but there's a time and a place, Billy. I actually was surprised that Dan Campbell uh, settled for the field goal at the end of the first half. I thought he is, he's, man, he has an opportunity here to get points. He has an opportunity to put it up, I think, three scores at the time. It was 21-7 at the time. He had a chance to make it 28-7. to He opted for 24-7. Yeah, but yes. it, wasn't, it wasn't a guaranteed 28-7. to And it looked like he was, he was kind of playing the game where it looked like he's going to go for it. And at the last second, he threw mm -hmm. up his arms. He's like, field goal, field goal. Because there was like six seconds left or something in the half. But yeah. Whew. Well, it was fourth down, too, I think. No, it was fourth yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought yeah. I thought he was going no, to me go too. for it. I was I, like, this is insane. I Just, think if you're going to go for it, that's the time to go for it because there's not going to be a response. You know, it's the end of the half. Well, yes. well, yeah, they ended up, I think they ended up getting the ball back with like six seconds and then they had some sort of penalty. So they just kneeled it and they took it to the half. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it, he had a chance to put it up three scores and I was like, you got to do this. You, they've all, you've given, all, given up seven points so far, but I mean, these are the 49ers. Who knows what could happen in the second half and hmm. What he, did in the sec what he did in the second half was cost his team a chance of winning that football game. I mean, he did. I understand the analytics. I get, you know, the percentages. No, I, I, I do. Uh -huh. I know they have a person there telling Dan Campbell, hey, your percentage of getting this, going for it on fourth down is better than kicking a field goal. I get all of it. I saw someone who actually, I think it was Kevin Clark, who actually, like, pointed out that, like, Dan Campbell... People are just saying this is an analytics thing because this is what's happening with the analytics. But this is not who Dan Campbell is. Dan no. Campbell just kind of grew up in the coaching world. Correct. That's watching, just the way he is. Watching yeah. Sean Payton do stuff like that. And this is just mm -hmm. the way that he is. Is He believes in his guys and he thinks that they're going to get it. So analytics, There was no analytics involved. He was just like, go for it. Yeah, I think analytics Correct. may be catching a stray here, even though he's probably doing Correct. things that yeah. like yeah. the <laughs> analytics would agree with. Which is great. If Dan Campbell... Anti analytics grit guy brings down analytics by doing what the analytics <laughs> would say is the right thing while not no consulting reason. them in any way whatsoever. So, so what you're saying is Dan Campbell accidentally smart. 
Dan Campbell being patron saint of analytics it's would funny. be great. Yes. <laughs> the only analytic he knows is go for it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's it. I'm going I think I think one of the fourth downs, they cut to him on camera right after a third down, he's already saying go for yeah, it. He was right. not consulted. Yeah, no. he, he did not ask you for guys, anything. You guys are ever in an argument and somebody agrees with you. And then they start giving their reasons, and you're like, "No, I, I don't really agree yeah. with that person." They might c- come to the same conclusion, but their argument is actually making me look worse. That's what analytics and Dan Campbell are. Yeah. It's one yeah. of those things. Uh, listen, he wanted uh, he wanted to be up by three scores at the end of the half, although he didn't feel it was important to be up by three scores when it was twenty four to ten, and he had a chance to kick a field goal. He decided not to. He went for it. Then he went for it again later in the game. He cost his team a chance to win. You don't have to be the toughest guy in the stadium all the time. We get it. You like to go for it. Give your team a chance. They're reeling. The Niners are coming back. You're stumbling to the finish line here. Give your team an opportunity to win the football game. You don't always need to be the toughest guy in the stadium. We get it, Dan Campbell. We get it. You like to go for it. We understand it. It got you to the NFC Championship game. But you know what? There's a time and a place. And yesterday, second half, was not the time nor the place. That's all. I mean, I could see him thinking up 14 if we're up 21. That's a dagger. And that's the game. Yeah, but we just talked about end of the half. He wanted to be up three scores. He took the field goal. So yeah. why not do it again? That, thank you. <laughs> I know. I'm yelling at you. Yeah, I'm very just... mad. I wanted the Lions <laughs> to get there, man. Know, why? But, why did you but, want the Lions to get there? Because I didn't want the 49ers <laughs> to be there. Yeah, something new. It's a good, <laughs> good story. A little Super Bowl rematch, Super yeah. Bowl live rematch. I was al- I was alarmed by the amount of people who texted me saying, I can't believe I'm so tired of the Chiefs. I'm tired of Mahomes, Kelsey. I'm tired of Andy Reid. I'm tired of the Chiefs being in the Super Bowl. And I guess I'm kind of tired. I, I just wanted some fresh teams in there. Yeah. And mm. the Lions, I mean, if the Lions can make it, anyone can. And that includes the Jets. But you were excited <laughs> that the Ravens lost so you could crush Lamar Jackson. Well, I feel bad for for what's about to happen to Lamar Jackson. It's already hey, happening. By you. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if I'm going to crush him, to be honest with you. I'm going to crush him. You but you're going to crush Dan Campbell? Don't know. If I'm gonna I am going to crush Dan Campbell. Yes. I mean, those are easy decisions as far as I'm concerned. What Lamar Jackson does is not easy. What Dan Campbell had to decide yesterday in the second half, those were easy decisions. So I will crush Lamar Jackson, I guess. Mm. I don't know. He also really botched that play. It was like the third down on the goal line in the last drive that ended up wasting a timeout. Oh, that too. That, yes. That that was more probably more critical than the field goals. Uh, he puts yeah. Montgomery in the game. He's essentially telling you, hey, I'm going to run the ball here. Uh, they knew it was coming. They stopped it, and he had to blow a timeout. He had three left. Jameer Gibbs is so much more dynamic than David Montgomery. <laughs> yeah. At any crucial moment, I don't know why you would have Montgomery and not him. Hmm. Just upset. But you know what? You leave the back door open for Jared Goff. He's going to go through it every time. Lions plus seven was great. We'll cover. <laughs> back door cover, baby. <laughs> Why are you looking at me? Just... <laughs> that saved my whole weekend. Yeah. It saved my weekend yeah. as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Big save. Why are you staring at me? I'm just You're judging you know. me. I'm not judging you, but also like I have an ad that's on my computer and it's like one of those mattress ads where they have like wine glasses and they drop bowling balls on the mattress to show you like how much the mattress can absorb. <laughs> and I'm always gonna watch those. I'm always very fascinated by those. You're always nervous it's gonna fall this time. Well, this time they didn't have wine in the actual glass. They had a tower of wine glasses. And they didn't have wine in the glasses. They had like little like silicone cubes inside of them right. so that it would fall and the cube would just fall. Yeah. Which I don't understand. I don't trust them. Well, here's the thing that I don't understand. I'm calling BS. Yeah, no, you got to play for keeps. Wine or nothing. No, Well, yeah. that's the thing. If you, if if this is your mattress Do it with wine. that you're doing and you're showing another mattress, ruin that other mattress. Have wine go all over everything on that other mattress. Not a little, little gel cube that's not going to do any damage. Like... Put down some wood, put down actually some white carpeting, have it ruin the mattress, have it ruin the carpet, have there some sort of electrical thing, and then all of a sudden it goes into that outlet and then there's a fire and your house burns down, all because you couldn't drop a bowling ball on the mattress. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean, yes. Yeah. 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 
Anyways, I love those mattress commercials. The same. <laughs> but also, who would ever drop a bowling ball on a mattress? Nobody. And the why would you? Unless the, it was an accident. The, why would it be an accident? The contraption that why they use. Why would you have it that high? It. Yeah, it's it's so weird. <laughs> do you guys like your mattresses? Like, do you have like your spouse or whatever? Like, yeah. Do you yeah, do a yeah. thing where like, oh, I can't feel anything move in my mattress? No. Yeah. I mean, a mattress is a mattress, you know. I think I need a new pillow. I haven't thought about my mattress since the day I bought it. That's great. That's yeah. the you did. You got a great mattress. If you haven't thought about it since the day you bought it, great mattress. Good point. Mm. I wonder if I sleep in the same spot too much and I'm wearing it in in the one spot. You know, aren't you supposed to though? Isn't that like yeah? You fit into the mattress. That's the technology behind it, right? Yeah, but I'm wondering if the part that I fit in is weaker than the other parts. Like if I were to go <laughs> lay down in another drop a part, bowling ball on it. I may do that. <laughs> Why would you keep a bowling ball that high? Is a really good question, man. <laughs> we'll discuss it next. Stugatz here. Heart disease is the number one cause of death in the U.S. due to the often invisible risk factors. One in five heart attacks occur with no recognizable signs or warning. Moreover, having conditions such as diabetes or high blood pressure can increase your chance of a heart attack by up to two times. With the big game upon us, heart attack risk can more than double when your home team is playing. We are encouraging all sports fans to learn about their personal heart risk factors so they can keep their hearts in the game. To help educate on those risks, Bear Aspirin created the Bear Aspirin Heart Risk Assessment Tool. The tool quickly assesses an individual's personal risk of developing cardiovascular disease so they can discuss their heart health risk factors with a healthcare professional as part of ongoing health management. Learn more and assess your risk factors at checkyourheartrisks.com. And we're back to that time of year. The big game time. The best team from this side against the best team from that side. A halftime show. And commercials. Who doesn't love commercials? Well, guess what? Instead of running one 30-second commercial during the big game this year, Miller Lite is running a thousand. Literally. Friends, family members, random people walking down the street. Miller Lite's turning everyday fans into beer ads. On February 11th, people will be running with Miller Lite jerseys on. Scan the QR code on the jerseys and you might just get a nice surprise. But you know what isn't a surprise? The dependable taste of Miller Lite. If you want free Miller Lite, turn away from the TV. Head to MillerLite.com slash running of the beer ads to learn more and for your chance to get in on the $50,000 worth of beer money rewards. And don't forget, you can pick up some Miller Lite pretty much anywhere they sell beer. Tastes like Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories and 3.2 carbs for 12 ounces. And we're back. We are. Ooh, that was a pumped up one. Yeah, it was. <laughs> that wasn't. That wasn't some whispered and no, back. That some was. A, that was an it. announcement. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes <laughs> when you are playing uh, under the weather in the elements that we're in, it's very cold down here today. Yes. By very cold, I mean it was probably high fifties, maybe low sixties. So mm -hmm. we're really struggling down here in Miami. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes when you're playing. Not a hundred percent. You need to you need to really give it that extra. Mm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. So I'm trying to I'm trying to bring that mm today. Right. Because, and I, and because it was cold, I have coffee. Right. In the uh, you know one of these cups. So you're playing with pain today, is what you're saying? I'm not playing with pain, but Just I'm also colds, right? I'm also playing like caffeinated. Right. You know what I mean, got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're back anyway. <laughs> We're gonna play a little game of if the season ended today. Oh wow! 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 Yes. Wow! So right. you're gonna ask us questions based on if the season ended today? Well, no, I'm just oh. gonna tell you if the season <laughs> ended today, who our next matchup would be, and then okay. we can maybe talk about that said matchup. Even though we still haven't really talked about the games, we talked about the Lions game, but we didn't really talk about the Ravens Chiefs game. So should we play if the season ended today? Today? Sure. I mean, all right. Mike Fuentes hit the if the season ended today open. We don't have that? Okay. If the season ended today. Well done. And then there's a bunch of graphics. <laughs> me, 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 me. Things flying across the screen. <laughs> Eater of the mind. It's a wonder we've won best football podcast for two consecutive years. The greatest years. football podcast there is. <laughs> Barring Stu Gatson, Billy Gillen, Mikey. Yeah. I'm trying to come up with the top five athletes who can know plunging a toilet. I, I, mean. <laughs> I hope we can figure that out. Number Gary one. Gary Plummer. Jake, Jake Plummer. Jake Plummer. <laughs> Damn it, Mikey A stole my job. I had Gary first. I mean, <laughs> linebacker, 40. 
49ers. Billy, please, I want to stop doing this voice. Why are you doing that voice? Don't ask you. Because it's the opening to if the season ended today. Are you a ghost? I think I'm kind of Dracula. Oh. A little bit of a ghost. Okay. Know. You know, you want to know why, how you know, like, or how I know that I'm under the weather? So Jake Plummer is obviously, like, very obvious, and I was going to take change his name to Jake Plunger. But his name already <laughs> works as is. No, yeah. I'm, I'm searching for a guy whose last name is Plunger. So yeah. there's got to be one from like the 30s or something. Yeah, yeah. To, I hope so. Yeah. Some guy who like his profession became his last name, and then he just went with it. And he went by yeah. Turd. Turd Carl, Plunger. Carl Plunger. Yeah. yeah. How about Pooh Richardson? I like that. Thank you. Maybe. <laughs> Thank you. Pee Wee yeah. Reese. No, doesn't work. Hmm. You don't plunge on a number one. Only on a number two. So. If you're plunging on number one, please call your doctor immediately. Like <laughs> <laughs> Something came out the wrong end. <laughs> yeah, anyway, what happened there? What do you mean? Well, if you're plunging after a number know one. I what you mean. Okay, thanks. All right. So, <laughs> if the season ended today. Yes. The San Francisco 49ers. Yep. Will be playing. Who? The Kansas City Chiefs. No, in the they Super made Bowl. it back. Oh yeah. my God. Rematch. Ah. Super Bowl 54 rematch. Unbelievable. Yep. I can't believe the Chiefs are underdogs again. I don't understand that. I, the line opened, I think, at two and a half. It's already down to one. Uh, San Francisco is still the favorite. I just, I mean, I just can't believe we're doing this again with Patrick Mahomes. What you're doing is provide, you're providing them with the disrespect that they want, covet, and need. Oh, you still don't think we're good enough? Okay. I just did it against Josh Allen on the road. I just did it against Lamar Jackson on the road. And now you don't think I could do it on a neutral field against Brock Purdy? Get out of here. Okay. Full disclosure, we both said that we, if we were in the AFC, we would want to play the Chiefs because this is a down year, and this is the year that you want to face them. So I still believe that. We are here now crapping on everyone who has doubted the Chiefs while being two people who doubted the Chiefs. Right. In fairness... They didn't look good headed into the playoffs. So you know, you know what they're suffering from. I call this the Alex Rodriguez uh, syndrome because okay. he was so good when he was young that when he had a down year, you were like, oh, you know, he's only batting two eighty five. Yeah. You know, but in reality, it's still a great year. It's just a bad year for him. Two eighty five is like mm -hmm. almost a batting title now. That's what I'm saying. It's right. it, but yeah, but that's there's they've been so good that even if they're just a little bit down, ah, uh, they're done. Not well, any good. Let's be clear about what's been good for them though. The defense has been historically great in the postseason. That's Kelsey, how good the defense has been. Kelsey's been very good the last two games. Kelsey's too. been great. Yeah. Last two games. He wasn't that great at the end of the season. The if, Chiefs looked good yesterday. They but, looked really good. But if I told you the Chiefs were going to score 17 points against Baltimore before the game, you would figure Baltimore puts up 20, 21 points yeah. and wins the game, I right? 24-17 if you tell me that. Here's the weird thing about that game is the first half of that game yesterday, the Chiefs were completely in control, and it did not seem like it was going to be a close game whatsoever. Yeah. Whatsoever. But it was also still a one-score game for a lot of the game. I mean, it ended a one-score game. But it didn't feel like the Ravens had any chance of winning that game, even Correct. though it was, I think, a seven or ten point game. It was 17-7 at, at half. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the second half, the Ravens did everything in their power to lose that game. Yes, they did. Absolutely yeah. everything no to yeah. lose that game. Zay Flowers yes. was living a light nightmare at the end of that I game. Felt, okay. I felt bad for him. I'm going to make a list of top five people I felt bad for yesterday. There you okay. go. We'll get yeah. back to that. Two top fives just like that. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe three if I could uh, find a plunger. <laughs> 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 yeah, the only the only time I thought the Ravens were kind of building momentum was one of those last drives they completed like two or three passes in a row to Odell Beckham. And then I thought, oh man, I'm really excited about Odell Beckham. They're not gonna win this game. Right. He had three catches, twenty two yards. He was he was really quiet yesterday. Uh, he had he had he one was. drive. One yeah. drive and that's it. I, I so I was watching the game at my sister's house and my brother in law was like, I forgot Odell Beckham was on the team. I'm like, Yeah. He's done nothing today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he didn't. He really didn't have a good game yesterday. He did not. Anyway. They threw him the ball like three times in like the fourth quarter when they were just trying to huck it up. But that was the drive. Yeah, it's weird because Zay Flowers. What an afternoon! He had five catches for 115 yards. He had a touchdown as well. He had their only touchdown. Only touchdown. But he fumbled inside the two yard line. Uh, he had the 15 yard penalty on the big catch that he made, and you can't give 15 yards back against that defense. You just can't do it. Well, it it. It wasn't super relevant. I mean, he ended up fumbling it, but they, they would have scored a touchdown on that play. You're right. I'm just saying yards. He was, he was their only thing that was working offensively, aside from Lamar Jackson, obviously. But right. he was their only like piece that was working yesterday, so you felt bad because you knew 
this is all going to fall on him. Then he goes and he injures himself by punching the bench, so he's bleeding, and then they have to tend to that yes. out of frustration. Bad afternoon. But you feel bad because he was having a great game, and mm -hmm. then you know they're going to blame him for this, even though he was really the only piece that was working for them. Uh, Lamar will get some blame as well. That throw, that interception uh, late in the fourth quarter there was a terrible throw and yeah. a terrible decision. Mm -hmm. Those are decisions that Patrick Mahomes really doesn't make. Like, he doesn't make bad decisions. So, this is not the best Patrick Mahomes we've seen. It's certainly the best Chiefs defense we've seen with Patrick Mahomes. But he's, you know, on the verge of winning a third Super Bowl before the age of 29. It's incredible. That's incredible. the thing. Incredible. You were saying earlier about, like, oh, I'm already sick of the Chiefs. <laughs> well, you better get used to it. Because <laughs> I, I, I didn't say that. I was, yeah, yeah. I was alarmed by the amount of people who mm. were like, like oh, I'm, I'm tired of, of seeing the Chiefs yeah. in the Super Bowl. Good clarification. Thank you. I have my top like five people I feel bad for. Already? To get to it. Yeah, already. Wow. Interesting. Yep. Hold on, I'll get the fanfare ready. Okay. okay. All right, go ahead. <clears throat> All right, so these are uh, Billy's top five people he felt bad for yesterday on Championship Sunday. Correct. Those, okay. Exciting. Number five. Yes. Dan Campbell. <laughs> I didn't feel bad for him. I felt bad for him. You know, he got them as far as he did. I feel like he still should be beloved and praised in Detroit for taking them as far as he did. But they were right there. Then you hear after the game, he's talking to his team, and he said, guys, this may have been our only shot. He's like, I don't believe this, but it's not going to be easy to get back here, and this may have been our only shot. Mm -hmm. And it ultimately came down to him, probably, and he says he doesn't regret going for it on fourth down the two times that he, he did. He should. Which is nor should he. Mm -hmm. Okay, nor should he. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nor Wait, should he. Mikey, hey, you agree with Dan Campbell? Absolutely. Why? Absolutely. Because that's how he got there. You can't say, you can't preach the whole time, all year, I trust my guys, I go for it, I trust my guys, I go for it, and then say, unless it really counts, then I'm, I don't. I'm kind like of. That, you dance with who brung you. I'm kind of That's with how him. he got there. I'm kind of yeah. with him, but especially at the end of the first half when he settled for the field goal, I'm like, yeah, that's cute, but the Super Bowl's on the line here. Just take points when you can. Because San <laughs> Francisco you. is just Who said waiting it? to There's erupt. There's a time, time and a place. This is a volcano a waiting to blow. Just take the points when you can get them. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I feel bad for him. Anyways, number okay. four. Number four. Jared Goff. Mm. I hear you. Jared Goff. Played well. Is good Played enough. Played really well. Oh, you know what I mean? No doubt. He's, he's good enough. He's good enough. Yes. Uh, Jared Goff, I believe, can win you a Super Bowl. He's been to one. He's been to an NFC Championship game, and I agree with you. He's good enough. <laughs> he's been to one. He then got traded away from his team. Then his team won the Super Bowl the very next year that he got traded. You feel bad for him there because he took him there. He's on the verge of getting right back to another Super Bowl. He's going to have his redemption story. He was replacing Matthew Stafford, who was beloved, beloved in yes. Detroit. In fact, I believe they honored him after he won a Super Bowl mm -hmm. with the Rams, which is kind of crazy because he won it for another team. Yeah. And now he comes into Detroit. He's done something that how long has it been since another quarterback has done this? He takes him to the NFC Championship game, is about to take him to the Super Bowl, and is kind of undone by his, his coach's decisions. Mm -hmm. Next 10 years, Purdy or Goff, who do you want? Goff. I don't understand. Mm, I don't Goff. 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 Okay. Yep. The line, are the Lions still won the trade or no? I don't know. Uh, I got to think about it. It's up in the air. We'll see. <laughs> the war is still raging. Yeah. yeah the battle might be over. That's right. true. Number three, Billy. Lamar Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Lamar did everything, including throwing a pass to himself. He did. I saw that. <laughs> he had yeah. a 13-yard <laughs> completion. And great. by the way, Everybody who came out with, like, the Giselle quotes, okay, the first person that did it was fine. Everyone else, it's, we get it, okay? Mm -hmm. Everybody's making the same mm -hmm. joke here. Giselle once said that Tom Brady can't throw the ball and catch it himself. And then they put the quotes, and they had Lamar Jackson throwing the ball and catching it himself. And by the way, by the way, if if who, I don't remember who it was, didn't get him by the ankle, he could have scored a touchdown. He could have gotten, like, an 80-yard touchdown mm -hmm. or something on that play. Like, Correct. there was open field down yes. there that he could have scored <laughs> if he wasn't tripped up. And that would have been... The greatest play we've ever seen, no doubt, in the history of football. Probably, if he but a ten yard play isn't the greatest play. Which Tony Romo was like, "That's one of the best plays you ever see in championship." Oh, I'm so done like, with Tony Romo. Don't get me started play. on Tony Romo. I'm well, glad I they say said this. That. It's one of the best thirteen yard plays I've ever seen in my life. hundred percent. Yes, fair. I'm I'm glad <laughs> that you said that you're done with Tony Romo because. There were a lot, now we can talk about this. There were a lot of people who were very down on Tony Romo and they're like, oh my God, 
CBS paid this guy $180 million for 10 years, and this is what we're getting. He's become so bad. That's Okay, so he's saying that, right? And mm. then also saw a tweet, Stugatz, and I don't yes. know if you saw this, because right. everyone was saying what Mike Fuentes is saying. He is so bad. Mm -hmm. And I don't think so. I think he's fine, right? He's fine. But I also... I'm with you, Billy. I also, and I don't want to be you know, disrespectful or disparage you know, a, a profession. It doesn't really matter to me who's calling the game. Right. Okay, I'm going to watch the game Agreed. regardless. The game so matters. It's yes. not a huge thing. Like, I couldn't tell you. Well, you really don't I, have a choice in the matter either. No, I know. I don't have a choice <laughs> like, in the matter, but I'm saying, you like, I, I, if you were to tell me, oh, my God, who do you want to call this game, Tony Romo or Greg Olson? I'd be like, I don't care. Just put the game on. Sure. I'm not going to be really paying too much attention. Anyways, yes. so everyone was crapping all over Tony Romo yesterday, right? Except Chris Cody, who came on and was like, Jim Nance, he tweeted out, Jim Nance and Tony Romo best team that there is out there i'm like is 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 he not following along with what's happening here or is he just trying to zig like what's going on here it was very confusing i mean i will tell you this romo gets me excited for a big game he does his excitement gets me excited and i don't really care about the, i don't care about the x's and o's it I doesn't matter guys. he yeah. he was a quarterback he his first two seasons he was like wow this guy's a genius and now it's kind of like he's like the excited like family member who it seems like doesn't watch all the games and is just so really what? excited by everything that's going on. It's like, uh, oh my god, that was such a great play, Jim. And it's right. like, yeah. The thing out, is that half the time, yeah, half the okay. time they're not great plays. That's yeah, the problem. Yeah, but his excitement yeah. is infectious. I love yeah. it. I Beauty's love the, the energy. The yeah. Exactly I mean, right. Uh, There's a Buck certain <laughs> innocence to it. Give me Buck and Aikman. <laughs> <laughs> Number two. Buck and Aikman. Wow. Oh come Buck on, Aikman. Zay oh, Flowers. Boy. Zay Flowers. Yeah. Number two. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Had a great be a game. Rough number one. He did have a great game. Stugatz mentioned it. 115 yards. He seemed to be, again, with the exception of Lamar, the only thing that was working offensively. Correct. Then he fumbles the ball out of the end zone, touch back, and then he goes and he punches a bench and he cuts his hand. And you just feel for him because you know he's going to blame himself for that loss. And maybe it is his fault. It started off well. Yeah, yeah. he was having a great game. So yep. I feel bad for him. Okay. And number one. Number one. Taylor Swift. Ow, why? What? I feel wow. bad for Taylor Swift, and I was thinking about it when they were doing a, uh, a promo for the Grammys, and they showed her on the screen deep in the booth, like deep in the box that she was in. She wasn't front and center, wasn't looking for attention. They just went and they found her, and then they had the Grammys are coming up on CBS, whatever the date is, and they were showing her. And the person that she was with saw it on the TV and pointed up at the TV and she mouthed something along the lines of, please go away. Mm. And then I realized. Oh, get over it. I realized. and you Stop know, showing up to the game. I'm probably, yeah. okay. I realized and I'm probably the only one that feels this way. While Taylor does go to the games and knows that the cameras are going to be on her, they also are constantly putting her on the TV. And it has to be annoying. Like, there's not a private moment for her at any of these games. She goes to the game. She's just watching her boyfriend. And they just plaster her face all over the TV every single game. She can't do anything. Mm -hmm. She's there. She's cheering. She's cheering too hard. She's swag surfing. And she's doing that wrong. Jason Kelsey's taking off his shirt. Where's Taylor? They're looking around to see her. Oh, where's this? Where's Taylor? Where's Taylor? Where's Taylor? Mm -hmm. It's just, I feel bad for her. She can't even enjoy... These great moments for her boyfriend. Boo hoo! You know, yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah, I she's felt a bad billionaire. I don't feel bad for her. Yeah, that's well, what I'm, I'm saying. Just, like, I felt bad yeah. for. Her. It's my list of people I felt bad for. This no, is someone that I, I yeah, felt you bad should, for. Your list. When yeah. they showed her and I saw her mouth, please go away. I said, you know what? She didn't ask for any of this, mm -hmm. <laughs> even though she kind of. She did. Yes. Uh, she all right. Did. Mikey A's first ever top five. First ever. Can't believe it. Next. Mm -hmm.